The Symbolism of the Squirrel The squirrel family includes tree squirrels, ground squirrels, including chipmunks and prairie dogs, and flying squirrels. But we are going to look into the common symbolism of grey squirrels, black squirrels, and red squirrels. And we will start by looking into the one feature of all squirrels that gives them their common symbolism, their agility. The squirrel, the links to Hermes and Mercury. Squirrels are superb and agile traverses of trees. They are very fast, can get to the most impossible looking branches and never lose their footing. And this is why the squirrel is symbolically equivalent to Hermes and Mercury, the messenger of the gods. It is able to take messages to the realm of humans from the gods and from the gods to humans. In mythologies it located as far apart as North America and Europe the squirrel was regarded with awe because of its ability to reach places that other creatures and humans could not. It is able to reach every single branch and leaf and to understand why this is symbolically important you should watch our video on the symbolism of the tree of life and leaves. In effect a squirrel can access every leaf, symbolically every soul, and take messages from the soul and deliver messages to the soul. Thus he represents the means by which spirit output, our thoughts and prayers, can be delivered to the gods. And the means by which spirit input, inspiration, healing, bliss and peace, divine love, or maybe punishment, can be sent to us by the gods. And not a leaf is excluded, squirrels can get to every soul. So bearing this in mind, let us now look at each type of squirrel and see if there is anything extra that can be deduced. Grey Squirrels The Grey Squirrel is native to Eastern North America, where it is regarded as an essential natural forest regenerator. This is because it buries the seeds and nuts it collects and then either forgets where it has put them or leaves them because it has no need of them. By doing this, it is essentially planting new trees, as these seeds and nuts then sprout and grow in spring, invasion in other countries. But grey squirrels have been introduced to many places around the world and have come to be regarded as an invasive species. They were imported into the UK in the Victorian era. The first recorded introduction was at Hanbury Park in Cheshire in 1876. Hanbury Hall is now owned by the National Trust. But in 1921, the Zoological Society of London released grey squirrels to breed at liberty in Regent's Park, and it seems as though this form of release has been quite a common occurrence throughout the country. 
Consequently, most people have only ever seen a grey squirrel and not realised it is not native to the UK. Food There is a claim that grey squirrels took over because of its diet, but let us look at that and ask, what do squirrels in general eat, red, black and grey? Tree bark and tree buds. They can cause damage to trees by tearing the bark and eating the soft cambial tissue underneath. This is why the Forestry Commission regard them as serious pests. Flowers. Squirrels eat flowers, including garden flowers like roses. They will eat the petals and the bulbs, nectar and stamens, and any seeds produced. Berries. They will eat cherries, strawberries, gooseberries, black currants, and indeed most fleshy fruit. Seeds and nuts, like almonds, walnuts, hazelnuts, chestnuts, pine nuts, along with acorns, beech nuts and hickory nuts. Fungi, mushrooms, toadstools and truffles. Squirrels not only like mushrooms and toadstools, but will eat fly agaric mushrooms, Amanita muscaria as well. They also like truffles. There are 13 species of truffle growing in Britain and squirrels have been used as indicators of where they are. Other food. Squirrels will also eat tomatoes. Sometimes they eat the tomato seeds and discard the rest. Sweet corn and other garden crops. Other animals. Grey squirrels will also eat insects, frogs and small rodents, including other squirrels, birds and eggs. A squirrel will eat birds eggs and young, wild bird eggs, hen and a duck eggs, and pheasant eggs. And here a pheasant is seen defending its eggs. But although grey squirrels are regarded as vermin in Europe because they compete with men, eating their crops, destroying their trees and attacking birds and taking eggs, so do all the other types of squirrels. Abbott squirrel The fox squirrel Even the red squirrel black squirrel and maybe we pick on the grey squirrel because it is the only one we see doing these things but there's every reason to fear the grey squirrel in the UK because it is a carrier of some serious diseases and few are aware of this diseases diseases such as typhus plague and tularemia, shown here, are spread by grey squirrels and have the potential to kill the squirrel, and a human being can contract these diseases if they are bitten by a diseased squirrel. Grey squirrels also suffer from parasites such as ringworm, fleas, lice, mites and ticks, which can kill the squirrel host. They can also get fibromatosis, a virus-induced illness which produces massive skin tumours all over the body and blinds them.
Red versus Grey Squirrel On mainland Britain, grey squirrels have almost entirely displaced native red squirrels. These maps show grey squirrel spread and red squirrel decline 1945, 2000 and 2010 and are by Craig Shuttleworth and the Red Squirrel Survival Trust. The grey squirrel and the red squirrel are said to be not directly antagonistic and violent conflict between these species is not believed to be a factor in the decline in red squirrel populations. The main reasons given for the decline are that winter hardiness, grey squirrels are larger than red squirrels and capable of storing up to four times more fat. As a consequence, grey squirrels are better able to survive winter conditions. Red squirrels have a mass of only 250 to 340 grams, which is 9 to 12 ounces, as a grey squirrel weighs between 400 and 800 grams, 14 ounces, and 1 pound 12 ounces. Breeding rate Grey squirrels produce more young and can live at higher densities. Furthermore, when the red squirrel is put under pressure, it will not breed as often. Environmental decline The red squirrel is less tolerant of habitat destruction and fragmentation. Red squirrels, for example, prefer coniferous woods in northern Europe and Siberia, preferring Scots pine, Norway spruce and Siberian pine, but the trees they prefer are disappearing. The great storm of 1987 occurred on the night of the 15th to 16th of October, with hurricane force winds. Winds at Shoreham by Sea, Sussex, for example, reached 190 kilometers per hour, or 120 miles per hour, before the anemometer failed. The storm felled an estimated 15 million trees, forcing the grey into red squirrel country. Storm Arwen occurred on November 2021, at a time when the red squirrel population had already retreated to Scotland. For example, even by 2013, fewer than 140,000 red squirrels were thought to be left, 85% of which were in Scotland. It was initially thought 4,000 hectares of woodland had been affected, but that has now been revised to 8,000 hectares, or about 16 million trees, nearly all preferred red squirrel habitat. Competition for food The grey squirrel competes head-on for food with the red squirrel. Both eat the seeds of trees, fungi, nuts, hazelnuts, beech, chestnuts and acorns, berries, vegetables, garden flowers, tree sap and young shoots. Both eat bird's eggs and nestlings, but the grey squirrel can better digest acorns, while the red squirrel cannot access the proteins and fats in acorns as easily. Predators Both are preyed on by the same predators in the UK. Wildcats, the stoat, weasels, raptors such as the goshawk and buzzards, the red fox and owls, and pine martins. This is a pine martin in Anglesey Woods. Anglesey is theoretically a haven for the red squirrel. This rare native species was introduced into the forest by the Anglesey Red Squirrel Project. The squirrel pox virus. Quay squirrels carry the squirrel pox virus, to which red squirrels have no immunity. The ICTV abbreviation for squirrel pox virus is SQPV. Fenner's Veterinary Virology, 5th edition, 2017. Squirrel pox is a fatal disease of Eurasian red squirrels. Scurrius vulgaris in the United Kingdom. The disease is characterised by multifocal 
ulcerative lesions around the mouth and eyelids. It is a highly significant wildlife disease in that the mortality rate is nearly 100% and is responsible for dramatic local contractions of red squirrel populations. The virus is endemic in an introduced non-native species, the grey squirrel from North America, Scurus carolinensis. The book then says grey squirrels don't die from it, but the evidence seems to indicate that they do, unless a different virus was to blame. And this seems to be the biggest problem. Squirrels frequently die, but we never find the cause. Grey squirrels, for example, carry Borrelia, Burgdorferi, Sensulato, the agent of Lyme's disease, and are frequently infested with Isodes ricinus, the tick that spreads the bacteria. As such, the grey squirrel may be affecting us as well as the red squirrel. An invasive mammal, the grey squirrel, Sciurus carolinensis, commonly hosts diverse and atypical genotypes of the zoonotic pathogen Borrelia burgdorferi sensulati. Invasive grey squirrels appear to become infected with locally circulating strains of B. burgdorferi sensulatu, and further studies are required to determine their role in community disease dynamics. Black Squirrels Black squirrels have very dark skin or hair, usually black because their hair contains a higher than normal level of the pigment melanin, hence their alternative name, melanistic squirrels. The colour is caused by a gene mutation, so grey squirrels can be black. If a dominant gene grey squirrel mates with a recessive gene black squirrel, the offspring will be grey. It takes two recessive genes to create a black squirrel. Two black squirrels will always produce black offspring. But they may take over from the grey simply because they exhibit a higher cold tolerance than the grey. When exposed to minus 10 degrees centigrade, black squirrels showed an 18% reduction in heat loss and a 20% reduction in basal metabolic rate. And black squirrels can now be found in the UK in Hertfordshire, Bedfordshire and Cambridgeshire. There are thought to be around 25,000 black squirrels in the UK. Recent sightings submitted by the public to the Black Squirrel Project show they have now spread as far as South West England, Wales and Southern Scotland. The first wild black squirrel was recorded in Woburn in 1912. However, Woburn Safari Park was only created in 1970, and Woburn in 1912 was owned by Hastings William Saxville Russell, 12th Duke of Bedford, 21st of December 1888 to the 9th of October 1953. Dr. Helen McRoby of Anglia Ruskin University has suggested that the first black squirrels were imported from the USA by the Duke himself. A keen naturalist, Russell was instrumental in saving the Pear David deer, which was extinct in its native China, by buying pears from European zoos, bringing them back to Woburn and breeding them in the park and he had other exotic animals, including birds, and a North American bison, called Bill. Red Squirrels Despite its decline in the UK, and the threats to its existence elsewhere in Europe, it is the red squirrel that provides us with the richest symbolic seam. The red squirrel's tail is proportionally longer than that of the grey squirrel, 
the tail of a grey squirrel, is from 19 to 25 centimetres, or 7.5 to 9.8 inches. But the tail length of the red squirrel is 15 to 20 centimetres, 6 to 8 inches, longer than its body and head length. As a consequence, it is probably the most agile of all the squirrels. Its low body weight and long tail all help it to balance and steer when jumping from tree to tree and running along branches. A lighter, redder overall coat colour, along with ear tufts in the adults and smaller size, thus distinguish the Eurasian red squirrel from the American grey and black squirrel. And it can swim. The Poetic Edda And it is the red squirrel that is the closest symbolically to the animal which is the messenger of the gods. It is the red squirrel that is being described in the Poetic Edda. The tree Yggdrasil is mentioned in the three poems Voluspa, Hafamal and Grimnismal. And in Grimnismal it says Grimnismal, Poetic Edda. Three roots there are that three ways run neath the ash tree Yggdrasil. Neath the first lives hell, neath the second the frost giants. Neath the last are the lands of men. Ratatosk is a squirrel, who there shall run on the ash tree Yggdrasil. From above the words of the eagle he bears, and tells them to Nishog beneath. In other words, the cosmology of the poetic Edda uses an ash tree as the tree of life, and the squirrel Ratatosk is the equivalent of Hermes, Mercury. And this squirrel is a red squirrel. With his two little ears and his horns, tufts. And Zeus, or Jupiter, is rather appropriately represented as an eagle. Rather appropriately, because the eagle of Zeus was one of the chief attributes and personifications of Zeus, the head of the Olympian pantheon. And as the poems say, the squirrel acts as a messenger between the king of the gods and the lands of men, just as Hermes did. But the squirrel must also carry messages to and from the chief of all the gods, Zeus, to Nishog, or Nishochra. And the poem continues... Grimnismal, Poetic Edda More serpents there are beneath the ash than an unwise ape would think. Choin and Moin, Grafitner's sons, Grabak and Graf Volus, Ofnir and Svavnir shall ever methinks gnaw at the twigs of the tree. Yggdrasil's ash Great evil suffers far more than men do know. Who were the serpents? For a believer in the mysteries, the serpents were the Catholic missionaries. Many sacred trees were cut down by Catholic missionaries. Donna's oak or Thor's oak was a sacred tree of the Germanic pagans, and according to the 8th century, Vita Bonafati. Octori Uvelibaldo, the Catholic missionary, St. Boniface, cut down the tree. Now at that time, many of the Hessians, brought under the Catholic faith, received the laying on of hands. Others indeed, not yet strengthened in soul, refused to accept the lessons of the inviolate faith. Moreover, some were wont secretly, some openly to sacrifice to trees and springs. Some in secret, others openly, practiced inspection of victims and divinations, leisure de main and incantations. Some turned their attention to auguries 
and auspices and various sacrificial rites, while others, with sound amounts, abandoned all the profanations of heathenism and committed none of these things. With the advice and counsel of these last, the saint attempted, while the servants of God stood by his side, to fell a certain oak of extraordinary size, which is called by an old name of the pagans, the Oak of Jupiter. And when he had cut the lower notch, there was present a great multitude of pagans, who in their souls were earnestly cursing the enemy of their gods. And so, symbolically, St. Boniface cut down the tree, representing the link men had to their gods, and this symbolically cut off all spiritual communication. No prayers, no inspiration, no healing, no bliss, no divine love, the red squirrel ran no more.